Hello everyone. Let's continue our experimental open-ended question and answer series. Today we are going to go through the seed dispersal pattern. So here is the question for you. Susan conducted an experiment using balls and a furry cloth. Each ball had a different number of plastic hooks. She stuck all three balls on a piece of furry cloth and worked in a straight line. The balls dropped at different distances from the starting point as shown below. Then she recorded the number of hooks on each ball and the distance the ball had traveled just before dropping shown in the table below. A why is it important to use the same type of ball for the experiment? Answer to make it a fair test Susan used the same type of ball. This way, the results wouldn't be affected by things like the smoothness, surface, or mass of the ball, only by the number of hooks. B. How can she improve the reliability of the results? Answer. To make her results more reliable, Susan repeated the experiment a few more times and calculated the average distance. Next, the map below shows how the fruits of plant A and plant B are dispersed. The fruits H and J are shown below. Both fruits have hooks on them. C. Using Susan's findings and the dispersal pattern, which fruit H or J represents the fruit of plant A. Explain why. Answer. Fruit J represents the fruit of plant A. Let's explain it. From Susan's experiment, we know that the more hooks the fruit has, the greater distance it can travel before dropping. Looking at the map, the fruits of plant A are found farther away from the parent plant compared to plant B. Therefore, plant A's fruit must have more hooks to cling onto animals for a longer time before falling off. Since fruit J has more hooks, it represents the fruit of plant A. Isn't nature amazing? Even tiny hooks help plants find new homes to grow. Thanks for joining us in today's lesson. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.